Hey everybody, thanks for dropping by. Robert Stearns here with my friend Teo Hayashi from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Brazil. That's right. And um, I want to talk for a few minutes today about Jerusalem and about Israel. Yeah. And here's, here's how I want to set this up. Teo, you are in ministry in Brazil, yeah. but you came up through YWAM. And so from a young age, you didn't only have kind of a sense of local church, but you had a sense of like the mm -hmm. globe and God's yeah. purposes in the earth. Yeah. So my question to you is this, what is your estimate of how many nations that you've traveled to, you've preached or oh. traveled to or whatever? What's a, what's a realistic estimate? Realistic estimate? Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you what, last year I did the count and I was on, uh, I think, 37. 37 nations. Yeah. But I think right now, probably close to 40, 41. Okay. Yeah. So here is a young apostolic church leader. You lead a major church movement in Brazil. You speak at churches and conferences all around the world. Every time I text you, you're like, I'm in Norway. Uh, so... And you're preaching from this book called the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. You're preaching from this book called the Bible, traveling all around the world. You are in your late 30s. Yeah. 37. Okay. Mid, mid 30s? Is that considered mid 30s? <laughs> I hope it is. Well, you're holding anyway. on as long yeah. as you can. Yeah. I got some months left. So. And you've never been. I know. That's crazy. To Israel. It was crazy. Like how, like this for my yeah, world, no, no, I'm yeah. like, how totally, is yeah. that possible? How are you preaching yeah, a book exactly. about a land, about a people, yeah. talking to the whole world about it, traveling to the whole world, exactly. and yet never going there? And so Teo is kind of the poster child yeah. of my passion to yeah. see young Christian leaders brought to the land of the Bible, brought to the yeah. land of Israel, because it shapes and changes your perspective. Totally. Thankfully... God yeah. got you there. Totally. You came with Eagle's Wings last yeah. year on the trip. And I would just like the folks to hear, how did that impact your life? Well, you know, I was actually thinking about that because I'm, I remember sitting in my hotel room in Tel Aviv, first or second day that I was there. Right. And I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, I've been doing like my, my nation count here. And I'm thinking, I've never been to Israel. I'm like, I was 36 at the time or 35, close to 36, 35 to 36. And I'm thinking, man, this is nuts. I've never been to Israel. And, and you know, nothing against Bhutan, but I mean, I've been to Bhutan before. Right. And uh, I mean, I'll, you've been Je to obscure, unusual. Jesus places. loves Bhutan, but I mean, come on, Bhutan, <laughs> Israel. And, and, and uh, I'm thinking, how is it that you can actually preach the gospel and get, if you have conditions to go to Israel, not go? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a, a soccer coach that never played soccer. Right. You know, and so, or a basketball coach that never, he knows the strategy, knows the playbooks, but he's never played. And so uh, I'm thinking, man, it, it was so life transforming to be there, to experience it. Bible came alive and we all hear that kind of stuff of people that go to Israel. We hear it, but then it actually happens. And yeah, you're like, but when oh, it actually this, happens, they're not it's just, different. It's not a tagline, it's yeah, a reality. Yeah. It's different. And when it comes to life, when you understand that Je you know, Jesus Christ, the man, Sometimes we look at Jesus Christ as or our Savior, our Lord, and that's awesome. And if you don't be careful, you westernize Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You make him Brazilian, or you make him Japanese like mm -hmm. I am, or you make him American like I was so, uh, you know, that this is where I learned about Christianity in mm -hmm. America. So it's like, he's American. No, 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 Jesus Christ is Jewish. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the land of the Jews and you actually experience their culture, and then you go back to the Gospels, it's it's different. It's yeah. different. And so it just comes alive in a different manner. Uh, I, I was joking around with somebody the other day saying, you know, my, my congregation, now they're they're kind of like at the point, they're like, man, all right, because now every everything I make reference back to Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, the Jews, and, and when I was in Israel, they're like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thankful that now we have, uh, we actually are- We're bringing the next group of your yeah. leaders over so, in October. They're exactly. coming with Eagle's Wings. And yeah. not only the, the, those leaders, we are actually our church with uh, Eagle's Wings. Right. We're doing it. Uh, we opened up for the whole church and whoever wants to come can come. And so the church actually, because I've mentioned so much during my sermons, they're like, we want to check it out. Now, one of the things we've discussed this that we are kind of um, trying to process through 
is at least somewhat in the Western church. I don't find it as much in other parts of the world, but in the Western church and with younger folks, there's a sense, oh, Israel. Yeah. It's kind of like either either there's a sense, well, that's what you do in your 60s yeah. to go and see the archaeology yeah. and to see, well, it's nice. After to go, you're uh, tired. Yeah, you know, that, oh, it's a nice little trip to take. Or those Israel people are kind of fanatic. Weird. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're doing the Star of David tambourines and blowing shofars. And yeah. I, that's a part of Christianity that's not quite, you know. Um, and nothing against blowing shofars and Star of David tambourines. I think it's awesome. <laughs> but it, it, it like gets marginalized. It does. But, I mean, Tel Aviv is a high-tech city. Yep. Israel is this, this blending pot of, of immigrants who've come from around the world. Mm -hmm. Israel is in the center of human rights discussions because yeah. here you have 1.6 million uh, Arabs living in the midst of a Jewish state, and yet mm -hmm. they're living with with rights and with with exactly. full participation in society. Exactly. There's the question of the Palestinians. All of this. So you came away discovering that Israel was not kind of a semi strange, marginalized yeah. thing, but very much a part of the human conversation. Yeah, well, you know, I think that um, growing up in church, that's kind of what you're exposed to when you talk about Israel. And so you kind of shape your your uh, um, your view of Israel that in that manner. But, I, you know, think about somebody in America that did, did not grow up in church or somebody in South America that was um, grew up maybe in Catholic background but never going to church. Uh, I think that they would view Israel differently. Right. Uh, for instance, I was talking to one of my... Uh, uh, one of the guys that I disciple, he actually got saved under our ministry. I disciple him. He came out of the rave uh, uh, techno wow. world. And he, I mean, no Christian background whatsoever. Right. I said, we've got to go to Israel. He's like, in Israel, there's the best raves. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, the best DJs come right. from Israel. I'm like, what? So actually, I think that, you know, a lot of us that grew up in church, and if you're, if you're watching this, if you grew up in church, chances are, Western church especially, Chances are you have this view of Israel. You have a of, mindset. Yeah, a mindset of weird people go there or old people go there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that a lot of the rest of the world, uh, you know, they're actually more open to having a actually a more authentic view of what Israel is. Mm -hmm. And when we went there, we actually went to a, a startup company. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Remember that? Yeah, and sure. Bolt. We, and we were having discussions on technology. Uh, you know, apps that we use every day, like Waze and WhatsApp and other, other technology, actually are coming out of Israel. Right. Uh, um, you know, I'm, of course, I'm not in that scene, but I'm saying uh, a lot of the nightlife, there's a, there's a lot of youth culture in Israel. Yeah, that we, we saw in, in Tel Aviv, even talking to the mayor, not a Christian, mm -hmm. and I don't think that he was an Orthodox Jew. Mm -mm, no, no, he was not secular a Jew. Secular Jew. Talking about how he is all for the the rights of, of you know different people and and uh, I wouldn't agree with everything he was saying. He was talking about the LGBT agenda, but just to, for me, it that that in itself challenged my paradigm. I'm right. Like, man, this is this is so different. It's not that idea that I had of Israel. I'm not saying that I agree or don't agree, but I'm just saying it was different. I was challenged in so many levels, and I was able to put the stereotypes as a Christian man growing up in church. I put it aside yeah. and saw this is this is a whole different nation that I expected and I was able to learn. Did you feel safe? Very safe. Yeah, very safe. That's uh, another misconception. Total misconception. <laughs> I, I was talking to some of the, 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 the kids from, from, from our ministry. They're like, yeah, what is, is I'm like, bro, if you survive New York City, Sao Paulo <laughs> City, Chicago. Chicago, you're good. You're yeah. good, man. You're yeah. good. You'll be safer there. Right, absolutely. Well, I, I just really want to encourage you. You know, it's my conviction every Christian should purpose once in their life for sure to worship the Lord in the land of the Bible, to go up and experience. You know, some people have called Israel the fifth gospel. You have Mark, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. And and the, then there's the land of Israel, which itself tells the story of the Bible, tells the story of Jesus, all of these foundational stories. You know, I just came back a few weeks ago. I don't remember if we did this with your group or not, but we go to the spring of Gideon, where Gideon oh, yeah, we went. went we did, did. Were we there? Yeah, it awesome. It's incredible. You're it there awesome. and you're thinking, this is where this happened. But it's not only about the history, it's also about our world today, because Israel faces the conflict of being surrounded by 27 
uh, Islamic dictatorships, mm -hmm. faces all kinds of pressures um, that, that are pretty foreign to us in oh, the yeah. West. And we have so much to learn. So I want to encourage you today, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Reset your mindset totally. about Israel. Re rethink Let go this. of the stereotypes. Let go of the st yeah. stereotypes. And, and make a, a purpose in your heart. I, I want once in my life, preferably on the younger side of your life, not waiting yeah. until yeah. you're six. Don't put it on the bucket list one day. Yeah. Uh, go there now and it's going to be transformative. And I'm so encouraged. You know, your church is coming now. We've yeah. got a young group of leaders coming now because Brazil yeah. is emerging yeah. as a very significant mm -hmm. um, player on the world stage. I mean, Brazil yeah. is emerging as, as, as such an important uh, part of the current discussion. I know even we saw, it's interesting because you're here this week and mm -hmm. this week it was announced that Prime Minister Netanyahu will hopefully make the very first ever first visit trip to Brazil. And mm -hmm. so we're seeing this kind of shift in the nations. Guatemala yep. is now moving their embassy back to Jerusalem. So wow. very, very interesting things going on. Yeah. So uh, check out Teo Hayashi. Go to dunamismovement.com. Yeah. Dunamismovement.com to learn about what's going on in Brazil and also here in the States because you've got yep. chapters in the States. And uh, keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. God bless you.